I think you see things as blessings when other people would say, you know, my life just got torn up. Yeah. yeah for, for, for me, you know, I like, I, like, I like the cup being half full rather than being half empty. And I, I'm not sure where that came from, but it, it's always been a, a kind of a, a natural thing for and me. And you've needed that cup as you've yeah. gone along, haven't you? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> a cup half full. We've all heard the expression, but how many of us really live on that side of life? The positive side, making the best of everything that's thrown at us. That is the life of Al Harrington. Long Story Short with Leslie Wilcox is Hawaii's first weekly television program produced and broadcast in high definition. Aloha, I'm Leslie Wilcox. Have you ever taken stock of the people who have influenced your life? Your teachers, friends, loved ones, all those who have helped make you who you are. And in some instances, maybe even saved your life. Al Harrington, star, athlete, teacher, actor, entertainer, started his life as Al Ta'a. He counts his blessings every day, and he never forgets the people who have filled his cup of life. Where were you born? I was actually born in, in, in American Samoa, in a little town called uh, Malai'imi, which was next to the Mormon town called Mapusanga, which is about, about 15 miles from, from Pangopango. The, the, the major harbor. And your family at some point established right. the Mormon church in American yes. Samoa. My grandfather, my great, my great grandfather was amongst the first large big chiefs, the chief called uh, uh, Su'apa'ia. Uh, that was the title name. Uh, and he was the first, amongst the first to be, be converted into the Mormon church. But the conversion was interesting because what happened is one of his sons, Uncle Salu, uh, had fallen off a horse and had hurt his, uh, wounded his leg rather seriously. And so they, they you know, like the uh, Polynesians do, we had the, the spiritual people come and bless him and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and do the herbs and all of these things, but he still never healed. So on a Sunday afternoon, the family had gathered together at my grandfather's house. And just a week before, they had brought the Catholic priest in, because we were all Catholics at that particular time. And he was supposed to have blessed the, the, my uncle, but the, 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 the wound did not heal. The, he, he still walked with a limp. And on that particular Sunday that I just mentioned, he, uh, two Mormon missionaries. <laughs> and this is, this is interesting, because in the old days, the Mormon missionaries were called uh, cowboy, cowboys. Why? Because they, they all came with jeans and boots. You know, and, and, and a lot of them wore these cowboy clothes. So, so one of my uncles said to my grandfather, he says, so let's call the local cowboy. Let's call the cowboys come in here. <laughs> and, and I'm saying it just like, yeah, someone actually, cowboy. It's not cowboy. <laughs> so they bring the, 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 the two missionaries in, and they ask them, okay, we want you to bless our uncle. And my son, my, my grandfather. <laughs> and, he, and so they do that. A week later, he, he's walking normally. So being the kind of spiritual, simple faith people we are, we says, well, maybe just more right than the other one. <laughs> so the so we transformation. Convert. So much of Hawaii's culture comes from people who emigrated here from other lands, Chinese, Japanese, Filipinos, and Samoans. Even Hawaiians came from elsewhere. Many moved to Hawaii to find work, to follow family, to reap the rewards of a mid-Pacific paradise. And some, like the family of young Al Ta'a, later Al Harrington, were compelled to move because of their faith and a hunger for higher education. So we become converted in, in, uh, in Western Samoa, and then the Mormon leadership was uh, preaching to us that as we get converted, we should leave Samoa and go get educated, get education in, either in America or Hawaii, and come back and build Samoa. So that's how we get oriented towards coming to Hawaii. So that's why in about, in about 1950, in the 50s, for our early 40, late 40s and early 50s, there's a, a grand mi migration of Samoans coming from, uh, from Samoa to Hawaii because of the, part of it was the Mormon uh, conversion. And your mother was part of that. And my mother was part of that. 
what ha had happened was my my, my <laughs> this is this is a great social drama that takes place because my my father at that time who was supposed to have been one of the great athletes of of of, of American Samoa well and, knowing you I, 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 yeah. I believe that right uh, well I was you know there, there's a line there's a line there so uh, and and uh, amongst the first to graduate from the Merritt's Brothers School, which is a Catholic high school, it was supposed to be one of the finest high schools in in in, in, in the Pacific. So he graduates and he marries, um, courts my mother, marries her, and then uh, and then has me and my sister and and uh, and another uh, brother that dies. Uh, so it's me and my sister. So he's supposed to. He, he, after the marriage and the settlement and so on, he's supposed to come to Hawaii and then work here and then, and then send for us. So that's what happens. That's how we get to Hawaii. He comes here and he works, but the human drama is such that when he gets here, he falls in love with this wonderful Hawaiian woman, oh. the Kalama clan, see, part of the Kalama, Limomi, and she was a gorgeous, beautiful Hawaiian lady. And, and then he ends up marrying her, and then my mom uh, <laughs> comes here and finds out that, you know, uh, this has happened. This is the human drama. And my mom, being the warrior woman that she is, goes to work as, as a nurse's aide, because in, in Samoa she, worked, she was hired, she worked as a nurse's aide throughout all of the, of the island of Tutuila. And she earns enough money to send for me and my aunt, Auntie Tino. But she comes, she and I come on the Mariposa to, to, to Hawaii. And your sister's with your grandmother? And my grandmother? sister's with grandma. Okay. Nellie's with grandma. So we come here, and then, that's, then we begin our life here. And mom is working as a nurse, and Auntie Tino goes to high school, and, 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 and develop, evolves as a person. And, and, my, and then I go to Liholiho Liho Liho School in Kaimuki. Because we live on 10th Avenue. And you actually lived in lots of different places right. as you grew up. Why right. is that? Well, all over the island, it seems. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know, but I'm not sure for all of the, you know, the sociological reasons, but I only knew that, okay, mom would say, you go stay with dad for a while. And then I would go and stay with, uh, with my mother, uh, my, my dad, and my, my stepmother, uh, Limomi. And, and I was very blessed. I was very blessed uh, with with people like uh, my, my stepmother Limo because she was a very educated, chem school graduate, mm -hmm. uh, uh, had scholarships, potential scholarships to go to the University of Michigan and other places, but she met my dad and then and then she settled down. But she was a very education conscious, conscious of speaking proper language, English, etc., etc. Et mm -hmm. Your life sure changed a lot quickly, you know. Yeah. I mean, the lots of movement and lots of. You yeah. know, and you, I think you see things as blessings when other people would say, you know, my life just got torn up. Yeah. yeah for, for, for me, you know, I like, I, like, I like the cup being half full rather than being half empty. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not sure where that came from, but it, it's always been a, a kind of a, a natural thing for and me. And you've needed that cup as you've yeah. gone along, haven't you? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, to go through those transitions. Right. But I, I, so this is what happens. I, I'm, I'm going between the two families, and I'm acquiring great knowledge in the Hawaiian community with, uh, with, with, uh, with uh, my mom, Momi, Le Momi, and my dad. And then I'm, I'm acquiring, um, my, 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 my mom now marries into the, marries Harrington, who is here as a soldier. And mom meets, her on the be meets him on the beach, which I remember clearly, because we were all living on the beach. Uh, having a, a family picnic. And what happened? And then uh, this uh, this Haole guy <laughs> was out at uh, Alamona Beach by the reef, and he couldn't get on his surfboard. So I know all you, I was about three years old, and I'm watching this guy. We're all watching this guy. So my mom swims out there and helps the guy get on get and get on the, on the board, and then he invites him to come have dinner with us. So he never leaves. <laughs> So he, they end up getting married, and then, uh, and, and then he becomes my stepfather, Milver R. Harrington, uh, who came from Iron Mountain, Michigan, you know, up there in the Upper Peninsula. And through him, I acquired even greater insight into, into the use of the English language. Yeah, at what point did you learn to speak English? Uh, this, is, uh, this is happening. 
this is happening as, as, as I'm you're going, a toddler. Yeah, you're yeah young. I'm moving back and forth. And, uh, and um, part of it was uh, just, just the fact that my dad was there and he spoke very properly, you know, and he, and he said, I don't, I, I don't even remember exactly when this took place, but he said to me at one time, he says, if you go downtown, you see all the guys who work in the office, they all speak English. All the guys that work on the street, they speak pidgin. So if you like work on the street, <laughs> or you like work in the office, better learn how to speak English. So that kind of stuck, you know, that kind of stuck. So I, I tried, you know. I did, you think, did you speak um, standard English in the home? Yeah, we, uh, uh, except with my mother, when she got mad at me, she swore at me in Samoan. So Al Harrington's life in Hawaii as Al Ta'a had a tumultuous beginning, a broken family, constantly being shuffled from one home to another. And yet he always saw the positive side of what other people would have seen as an upheaval. But Al Ta'a's real journey had not yet begun. That journey started with Mrs. Abru. In first grade, I had Mrs. Abru. This was great Portuguese Hawaiian woman, big bugger. You know, <laughs> yeah, she sit down on a chair, you know, hang over some stuff, you know. But all of us, as small kids, we, you know, we were afraid of her because she was huge. And, it, and if you don't get things right, man, she slap you, Mrs. Abru. But it's, so I figured, I figured out that if I could read well, she gonna like me. So the Dick and Jane books, eh? mm. so I, I would take the Dick and Jane books and I learn all, all, learn how to read before the reading lesson took place. You know, either the night before. I would, I would look at the books. Uh, uh, did your parents tell you you got to study, you got to no, work hard? No. No, 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 no. That doesn't come in. It comes in more in the relationship with the teachers oh. because I wanted the teachers to like me, you know. So that you would have a pleasant yeah. time in class. Right. Or, or so that they would respect you? Uh, part of it was respect. Part of it was just needing some affection, <laughs> needing some care, somebody, somebody to like you. Mrs. Abru probably was the first affection that I'm getting outside of the of the family, you know, uh, biological parents and and, 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 and non-biological parents, I mean, mother and father. So she's uh, this big Hawaiian lady, great big smile. When she when she looked at you and smiled, you know, her whole face smile made, made you feel, you know, like, oh, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so you wanted to please Mrs. So Abu. I wanted to please Mrs. Abru. And so that's the beginning of my my move towards uh, uh, academic excellence. Not, it wasn't just because I, I was interested, but I wanted to please her. All Al Ta'a, later Al Harrington, was trying to do was to make Mrs. Abru happy. But Mrs. Abru's class was the beginning of Al's journey into educational excellence. And he did so well, other teachers and school principals took notice. So, so I go to Laia when 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 uh, when my uh, I'm I'm living with my father and his and the Limomi, <laughs> my mother. I, I I I feel such great affection for that lady. Uh, uh, <laughs> so we moved to Laia, and uh, and then I I, I go to Laia school, and the teacher there, is Mrs. Enos, is another one. I I, I remember teachers because they were they were good to me. So Mrs. Ina says to uh, the principal, uh, I think his name was uh, uh, Kanaheli, he was a Kanaheli. And he said, uh, she says to him that maybe we better move him up to the next because we might hold him back at this grade. So, the, they, so I go to the fifth grade. And, then, and, and that's how I skipped the fifth grade because again, how important teachers are to kids. You know, because when I think about the teachers that were good to me, that's what, that's what gave me a leg up. It gave me a leg up in dealing with the, 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 the social challenges uh, and economic challenges that come, to, to come later. And then, uh, and then later on, we moved from uh, Manoa housing to, to uh, Halaba housing. And then I go to IAS school. At IA school, there's a, the principal, Griswold, Charles Griswold. I, I, these names stick in my head. And uh, Charles Griswold 
sees four of us that are going to Halaba Housing School, or IA School, IA Intermediate, and he says, four of you can, uh, should go and take the test to go to Kamehameha, because, you know, he sees some, he sees some potential in us. Again, the teacher's vision, right? A teacher looking at a, at a, at a student and saying, okay, this is, there's potential here, let's see what we can do with it. So the four of us go to take the test at, Kuna, at Kamehameha. We all pass the test, and we're all getting ready to, Kamehameha, to go to Kamehameha School, except uh, the guy, Kent, was the president of, 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 of uh, uh, Colonel Kent of Kamehameha, and they write me a letter saying that, you know, sorry, the other three can come, but you cannot come because you're not, you're not Hawaiian. Now, living in Halawa housing, you're running around with all these brothers, you know, all these brothers that, you know, we, we, we're doing all kinds of crazy kinds of stuff together. And you don't know if you, if you Samoan, Portuguese, Filipino, or whatever, we're just running together, you know? So all of a sudden you became aware of this distinction between you. Yeah, yeah. exactly. How'd that feel? So, uh, <laughs> you know? so, uh, so I, they, I, they started going to Kamehameha right. and there you were. The three guys that uh, we were, uh, Danny Fuller was one of the great football player who eventually goes to uh, Purdue, University of Purdue. But uh, Griswold says to my dad, since I didn't get to the camp school, you should go take the test to go to Puno. And I said to him, I don't like go to that Howley school, you know. <laughs> and my dad says, well, maybe you gotta go over there and learn how the Howleys do stuff. You know? And which, which dad is this? This, my, dad? My, my, this is my, uh, st my, my adopted father. My so, so your Howley stepdad Howley dad. is saying you should check out the Howley yeah, school. Because he's a, he's, he's a policeman at uh, Wahewa, precinct, uh, precinct you know. but we live in Halaba housing. Because so, he had so many kids. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because now there's there's nine kids. You see, now there's nine kids, and I'm the oldest of the ten. So he says to me, "Maybe you ought to go." To, and I told him, "I don't like going to school." It happened then that uh, that uh, the captain of his precinct in Wahiwa was Curtis Elkia's father. Oh, Curtis Okea was a Punahou grad, yeah, the Punahou wrestler? Grad. Yeah, my dad goes to Curtis Okea and tells him about what happened. Did uh, your dad take offense that you said you didn't want to go to a Howley school? No, my, no? my, 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 my dad didn't, didn't, because he he had a sense of what Hawaii is. There's one thing about my dad, uh, my, my, uh, my uh, stepfather or my, my adopted father was it. He had, he had big picture vision of things, you know. <laughs> So, and so he, he, he understood what the situation was. So he goes to Curtis Yelkia, his captain, and he tells the captain about <coughs> wanting to go to Puno. So the captain comes to my house in Halab Housing. And Curtis Yelkia's father was big. I mean, I mean when he walked in the door, he, he, he closed the light. <laughs> no, no more light come through the door because he was big, oh, big. As a matter of fact, the Yelkias were, Consultants to Kamehameha, the, the clan that I mean, that family goes back to Kamehameha the Great. So, uh, Kurt, Mr. Eoke walks in the door, and I look. I'm sitting at, at, at the table. <laughs> I said, "I hope this bunker will give me liquor." <laughs> so he walks in the door. And he says, "Hey, your father said you don't like take the test school, put all." He says, "No, I'm, I don't like go to high school." And he looked at me. He says. I went Puno, and I said, and then he looked at me and he said, "So you better go take the test." I said, "I said okay." <laughs> so Al was fulfilling his family's calling to go to Hawaii to get educated. Who could ever have dreamed that this young man, the future overachiever Al Harrington, would have the opportunity to enter one of the most prestigious learning institutes in the Pacific? As it turns out there were many who believed in the young Al Ta'a. So there, I go take the test at Puno, I pass the test, and then I become influenced by some other people that, that eventually ma makes us see a bigger picture again. Amongst them was, uh, one was uh, Dr. Fox. Dr. Fox, who was president of Punahou School, kind of took us 
there were some Hawaiian boys that went, or people from Hawaii, that went to Punahou, and he kind of took us in under his wing. You, you'd already distinguished yourself athletically as well. Yeah, I began to, because <laughs> in, in, in the Halava housing, in Halava housing, we were not, we're not far from Japanese camp, plantation camp, and Puriki camp, Filipino camp, and so we all used to play uh, baseball up in Aea uh, Community Center. But the best organization of baseball and any sports was the Japanese community. So we were then playing in Barefoot League, uh, uh, playing baseball, mm -hmm. and they were all very well organized. So I, I, was, I began to play baseball in there. No football. Uh, and then, then I started also to play Barefoot League. Uh, and I was only, I was only 13. But people noticed. Yeah, because I had big feet. <laughs> but but I, then, then there were a lot of, some kids that came out of there already playing in high school, you know. So, and, and it happened that uh, Mr. Yaukea had heard that I had been, I had been playing uh, in the athletic, athletics or uh, sports in, in, the, in these various leagues, local leagues. And so that's why when I went to uh, take the test at Punahou, he, you know, he kind of pushed the fact that I was also a good athlete. And, and, and at this particular time, you know, so many things happened that, because Dr. Fox was president of, of, of Punahou School, but he had not won a, a, a ILH championship in football. In baseball he had, but in other sports he, I mean in, his, in football he, he didn't, but he loved football. So that's why at this particular time he was trying to recruit whatever Polynesians or whatever athletes he could get to play football. So that opened the door for me also, besides the fact that I, test, I, I passed the test. I, I, uh, I, I read accounts of your playing football at Punahou at that time because you were admitted mm, yeah. as Al Ta'a. That was yeah, your name then. Yeah. And you, uh, I, I know uh, the longtime sports columnist Bill Kwan called you a yeah. man among boys because <laughs> they would pile on you. And, and if they managed to stop you, and they'd untwist themselves from on top of you, and then you'd just get up and say, hey, good going, good tackle. <laughs> But you were you were hard to stop. Well, I wasn't the only one. Had others uh, that were like Danny Fuller and and uh, the, the Abruz. There were some Abruz that were playing, and and Yonamini, Wally Yonamini was before. What I, was your position? I was a running back. I was a running back, and uh, so but yes, it was nice of him to say that. But the, had other 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 guys that were were great too. So that's that that took us to Puno, and then. Uh, and what, what about uh, your concerns about, you know, like going to the Holly school. school? Again, you know, you know what it is? Teachers. Running, getting into good, having good teachers at Punahou. I remember these guys, Brogan taught me English. And this guy taught me Shakespeare, you know. And he starts to speak in, you know, in, the, in this poetic sense of, of, the Ameri of the English language. And I took to that. I said, wow, you know. Rich, there was a Mr. Rich, he taught me, uh, he taught me Western Civ, you know, and he, the fall of the Roman Empire and all this kind of stuff about the, the Mongols coming down. You know, and, but made it colorful, made it, made it real, you know. And then I had, uh, Others who taught me economics and stuff like that. That that's what that's what uh, became intriguing. Is the teachers that were there? There's Brogan, uh, Kiefer was another one. Uh, but and then Imes, James Imes, who was a athletic director. And How about social life? Because you're a kid from Halava Housing, son right. of a police officer, right. adopted son. Or right. He was soon to adopt you, but you were yeah. uh, step kid to a right. police officer. Never knew what Howley you know, people were, you know, because us guys we were out in, in a, out in the districts, out in the Halava Housing. Everybody, everybody's uh, one color, or, or we all mix. And to be there, and then all of a sudden to see, wow, the, the, the management people were mostly Howleys at that time. Some Japanese, but mostly Howleys. So what my father had told me, you know, began to ring true, you know, that all these guys that, 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 that speak good English are the, are, are the ones that, that, 
that are in management, everybody else is doing the manual work. So then, that, then I move more in that direction because of teachers, because of my, my dad. What about friends? How about making friends there? Oh, yeah, I, I am, and I made some great friends. And when you're in sports, it is a family that right. welcomes you, right? So right. You, you did a lot of stuff with the fellow football players. Yeah, yeah, the Espinders, A.K. Espinder, and their family, they just kind of took me in. Uh, the Charlie Henderson, uh, who, whose father was president of Castle and Cook, and, it, it, you know, I would sleep at his house, and they had maids, you know, and I'm looking, and, and then uh, I, I remember, this is really interesting, I went to this party at Luann Dunkley's house. And uh, I walk in the house from the kitchen, and right as you get out of the kitchen, you see this big freezer, the same kind of freezer I saw at the Paquet store down, down in, in a air, you know. Uh, I look at the freezer, I say, holy cow, these guys get one store in the house, you know. So all of that kind of stuff then begin impact me as to, okay, how come they got that and we know more that. And what were your friends at Halava Housing saying about you know, how come you never hang with us anymore? Right. So my mother, the warrior woman that she is, I started to get famous as a f football player. So, so the, the, the headlines were Ta did this and Ta did that. You know, my mother looks at that and she says, "How come you you? How come Ta? He is Ta. He, he no support you. He, your daddy support you." Yeah, Harrington support. So she goes to <laughs> she goes to the courts and has my name changed, changes my name to to, to Harrington. And so I come home the summer of my sophomore year, and some of my, my freshman year, I'm going into sophomore, and uh, and uh, she says to me, "Okay, that's your dad now. Your name is Harrington." I said, "Oh, okay." We all have difficult times in our lives, and when those difficulties do occur, we can choose to hide from the problems, or we can embrace them and learn from them. Al Ta'a, now Al Harrington, chose the latter. He chose a cup half full. For PBS Hawaii and Long Story Short, I'm Leslie Wilcox. Ahoy ho kako. For audio and written transcripts of this program and all episodes of Long Story Short with Leslie Wilcox, visit pbshawaii.org. You know, um, people who um, know you well, uh, they, they, they use a couple of adjectives to describe you most, and I think it goes without saying, you know, they feel like you've got a good brain and you've great, um, you know, athletic ability, but they say what really sets you apart is your hard work, and your tenacity, uh, where does that come from? It comes from my mom. mom. You know, it's the warrior spirit of my mother. My, my mother, when she make up her mind that this is going to get done, it gets done, you know? And I've also, you know, I, I believe that if, if, I, if I don't do as well as you do, I can, I can either outwork you or I'm gonna out-hustle you. 